Hi everyone, welcome back uh, to a new tutorial. Um, it's been a while, hasn't it? Now, I did promise you on the last video that I did that I would paint this week something with cherry blossom trees with a footpath, that type of a thing. I had a request for that a while back. But then, I was contacted by someone who made the request a long, long, long time ago. Um, so I said I better do his request first. And I will get to the um, cherry blossom trees um, and the next one, which will be very, very soon. Uh, so this this week, what I'm going to do is, now, someone on YouTube asked me to maybe try and paint something like a golf course. Um, a ho like a golf hole by the water or something like that. Just to show them how to approach something like that with a lot of green. So I said this week, uh, because... I kept forgetting to do that request. I said, look, I'll do it this week for you. Um, so unfortunately, I can't do the cherry blossom trees. But I will be doing it in the next two or three days. So you should see it up online very, very quickly anyway. So, uh, But for now, I'm just going to focus on the golf course here. Just to get, I suppose, to get you used to using different greens and capturing sunlight hitting the grass, that type of thing. And also sunlight reflections. So that's what we're going to focus on this week. So I have my canvas here. It's 20 inches long by 8 inches high. And this is... Now there was another painting on this. Um, but I just cleaned it off. I primed it a couple of times. I gave it two, two coats of primer. And it's just a normal water-based household um, undercoat with some PVA glue mixed in. And the PVA glue... Um, it takes the dryness out of the canvas and it kind of almost seals the canvas slightly um, to prevent your paints from soaking right through the canvas. And then it's lightly sanded, very, very lightly, but very, very, very fine sandpaper. And that's what makes the paint flow lovely and smoothly over the canvas then. So, if, um, for instance, when I'm doing uh, tutorials, when I'm giving lessons um, in the community centre, um, in my local centre here, I showed them the before and after uh, of a canvas which is not primed and primed. So the fresh, the new canvas just purchased would be very, very rough and dry like sandpaper. Really low like sandpaper. So if you're buying a canvas like that, and it might not necessarily be a very expensive canvas, but if you're buying a slightly budget, we say a budget canvas, um, they are expensive to buy let's be honest some of them are very expensive so I can go with a nice middle ground kind of a budget canvas um, they're very lightly primed um, so they're basically just kind of sprayed with a machine and they're very rough now even with those ones if you gave that a very light sand with a very fine sandpaper you'll feel the difference immediately and you'll save your brushes as well in the long run because they do eat up your brushes especially synthetics um, they will eat through the brush very, very quickly. It's like painting on sandpaper, basically, sometimes. So even sanding that canvas alone will make a difference. And if you don't have uh, access to a primer then, you could just take some linseed oil with some tissue, wet the tissue with linseed oil, and rub your canvas with that. And do that maybe two or three times. And that then will take the dryness out of the canvas. And it's almost... It's almost like using liquid clear, we'll say. But it's not liquid clear, it's just normal linseed oil. And it just gives the canvas a bit of a base and your paints will kind of flow around that little bit better on the canvas. It does help. Um, but ideally, I do coat my canvases with a primer, just a normal undercoat primer, uh, water-based. I let it dry, give it a quick sand, and you're good to go. And these are lovely, lovely soft uh, canvases then when they're finished. They're really soft and smooth. It's, it's, I suppose, it almost feels like a really, really expensive canvas, if you know what I mean. Um, so that's what I do. And it's all about trying to save money and, you know, keep costs to a minimum, I suppose. Um, but that's it. I'm going to put paint in my palette. Um, I put the camera up overhead and I go through my paint switcher and we're going to work with some nice greens there. Now. So yellows, blues, yellows, blacks, yellow and browns. We'll mess around with different colours. Nice bit of practice for you. And there'll be some trees in this as well. So um, without further ado, I have my coffee here. Um, I have my image on the tablet next to me here. I was looking at a couple of them. I wasn't sure which one to go with. So I found one which I think is nice. Um, it has some water. I had the golf course just on the water's edge. Um, 
So we'll we'll give that a crack this week, shall we? I hope you enjoy this. And thank you very much for all my patrons. Um, for the support you're giving me, it really is a huge, huge help. You've no idea. And if you would like to support me, uh, you can go to Patreon. And there are some lovely tutorials on that as well. Uh, just for Patreon, some extra tutorials. Um, so if you want to support me, go there. Thank you very, very much. Everything helps. Everything helps. So without further ado, let's go. And have a bit of fun with this. Don't go anywhere. Right, so here we go. Um... Now everyone, I'm going to start by putting paint on my palette. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Um, okay, yellows. I'm going to put on some cadmium yellow. It's actually cadmium yellow pale hue. So I'm going to put some of that just here. Just a little. I'm going to take some Naples yellow. Which is a beautiful creamy yellow. I'm going to put some of that here. No, I'm just checking to see you can't see the camera, can you? Or you can't see the colours on the palette. Let me just zoom back here now slightly, ever so slightly. So you can see everything properly. There. Is that better? I do apologise now, everyone. I'm just working with the equipment I have here. I know it's not ideal, but look. That's all I have. And I'm afraid that will have to do. So, burn cyanide. A little bit of that. A little touch of lamp black. This is going to make some wonderful earthy uh, greens. Well, probably use that more so than blue, I think. Um, let me see. I might take a touch of... Actually, we don't need burnt umber. I don't think we need that. We'll try a limited palette for this. Um, some cobalt blue. Just for those trees in the distance, because there's very, there's kind of a bluey green off in the distance there, isn't there? And last, but certainly not least, some titanium white. A nice dollop of that. And this will be a fun painting to try. It's, it's a bit more unusual. It's something that I wouldn't have painted in the past. But sure, look, let's, let's give it a go. I'm open to all sorts of requests here on this show. Now, we start with this down here. Um, you should see the picture on your screen there, by the way. It's a lovely golf course. Um, I'm not sure if it's Fosha Golf Course in Cork City, or it could possibly be another one up the country, but it's somewhere kind of around... Um, it's somewhere around the south of Ireland, I think. Um, so... This kind of jumped out at me because I have some lovely reflections here on the right hand side and it's nice to practice reflections with this type of a scene. So let's go around here now with this this hole just at the water's edge here and it kind of turns and comes back and disappears like that and then we have the bank which comes down like this. Uh, the initial sketch is probably the trickiest part really trying to get this right. I'm just kind of looking at points now on the photograph. There's a little bit of a land bank coming out here. Isn't there? Like that. And I'm going to put the horizon line just around the middle here. So that is where the top of the water ends up there, okay? That's the water's edge. So this is then going to cut out like this and it's going to little wiggle like so. And that'll do just fine. So we have all trees all the way up along here coming down. And I'm going to try and get some nice perspective with this now as well. And we have a bank that kind of comes down from high up here with some trees. And then it goes off like that into the distance, doesn't it? And I'm just being very loose with this now. This is very, very, very loose. So that's it. That's all we need to do. Simple, isn't it? So I'm going to take a brush. Now let me see what kind of a brush should I take. I was going to use a big green one, but you know what? This painting is small enough. It's not a very big painting. So I think I will just stick with a medium flat. Now that's my medium flat. That's my idea of a medium flat brush. Okay? Something in the middle. This is my large 
This is the biggest brush I have. Okay. Now this is kind of fairly worn. I'll show you another one. Um, okay. There we go. These are my big green. These are my stubby brushes, what I call stubby green brushes. And that's what I paint everything with, my skies, uh, big clouds, that type of thing. Um, so large areas, I'll paint with these. The next size down is these, the medium flat. So I'll just call them a medium flat for now. And then we we'll go from these to a small flat. So these are, you know, a couple of brushes, a handful of brushes. That's really all you need, everyone. Um, I will go with, hmm... We'll try this. We'll try this bad boy, will we? So I'm gonna dip my brush now into my turpentine. I'm gonna soak the brush and then dab it on the tissue. Give it a good dab. So again, it's not soaking wet, but it's just damp. And I'm going to take a very pale color for here with a touch of a kind of a greeny blue because there's so much green going on in this painting. I wanna keep uh, those tones. I wanna to complement each color I'm not going to go up here and put a very bright blue sky in. You could if you wanted to, but I'm just going to keep it subtle. So I'm going to take some white with a touch of blue. And again, I'm using cobalt blue because it's very forgiving. And you can really adjust your mixes very, very nicely with this blue. So a little bit of white, a little bit of blue. And you can see, look, it's running away. That's how wet it is. If you feel it's too wet, just take more white. The white will thicken it up. And into that, I'm going to take a touch of Naples yellow. Now, it looks a bit yellowy at the moment, so let's take a touch more blue. I just want to go for a nice, um, cool blue, a kind of an earthy, greeny kind of a blue. So let's just try this. And this is quite wet now, believe it or not. So let me just dab some of that on the tissue, take more white. The white will thicken it up. And there we are. And you can see now how smooth the canvas is, lovely and smooth from that primer and from sanding it as well with the sandpaper. And don't worry, you're not going to damage the canvas by sanding it. You're only taking the very top layer of primer down a little. That's all, that's all you're doing. Don't be afraid. The canvas is very, very tough. So let's put in this nice earthy blue there. And in fact, you could even cut down through some of your trees as well. There we are. And I'm just going to dry my brush now and pick up a little bit of white. And I'm going to put a little bit of white just there off in the distance. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to give these distant trees a nice uh, thick base to paint on. There we go. And that's a nice simple sky. Nice and easily, nice and simply done. Um, so next we have some trees in the distance. And now you could use this brush if you wanted. Um, in fact, you know what, I will. I'll use this brush just for the undercoat of the trees here. So I'm gonna put a very kind of a dark greeny blue there first. So let's take some cobalt blue with a little touch of Naples yellow again. And I'm using this now just thick paint on its own, no turpentine. Um, I did not clean the brush now since my last mix, I just gave it a dry on the tissue. So let's take some blue and some Naples yellow. And I might take a touch, uh, a little tiny touch of black. And just a little touch, I mean just a little tiny touch. Do you see how strong it is? Very, very strong colour. Touch of white. And I'm going to just try that now. Put in some nice distant trees off there. And this will give some depth. That's what I'm trying to achieve here. Some depth, that's all. And look, you can swish it around in all directions. Don't be shy. Don't be shy, just go for it. And you know, I might even put a touch of pink into this. might be nice, actually, off in the distance. So, with that paint still on the brush, I'm just going to take a touch of cadmium yellow. So you see, I'm warming it now very slightly as I go. And I'm blending all of this together very, very loosely. Let's try a touch of burnt sienna. And a touch more of blue. That will give us a nice warm green there. There 
There we are. You see? Nice and free. And this is just an undercoat. I'll be putting highlights on top of this again. So not to worry. I'm mixing a little bit of grey into that. Just a little bit here and there. And let's go a little bit here. I want to keep the colours nice and subtle. I don't want to go too rich with the colours. I keep the rich colours for here, okay, along the front. So I just want to keep this all nice and soft and subtle off in the distance. Now, let me just sit back and kind of take a quick look and see how you're getting on. Compare colours, you know. So I'm comparing the different colours now and how they're helping each other on the canvas. And, hmm, okay, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I might just take a small brush for a minute, just for, a, just for one minute, a couple of seconds. And now this is my small flat. I'm going to just put a little touch of pink off in the distance. Just a very, very slight touch. Um, just to warm it very slightly. Now, tiny bit of cadmium red. There, that's all I don't need. Tiny, tiny little dab. And with a dry brush, some cadmium red some white and a touch of that cobalt blue i'm going to mix that in just here and there i just want to add a touch of that pink off in that distance you see just dab 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 here and there that's plenty and that's just a nice little warm tone just in the center of the painting i don't know if you can see it but it's there so I'm putting that down now and I want to start mixing some slightly darker colours because I'm working from dark to light. So I want to get the dark colours on and then put my bright highlights on top of that for my trees. So sticking with this brush now, I'm, I, I haven't wet the brush again. I'm going to take some blue, some black and a touch of cadmium yellow pale. And now you can really start to see it get dark, can't you? And the, the little bit of white that I have on my brush is helping to knock back that yellow. You see? So it's almost like a grey, greeny, kind of a blacky colour. If you went into just black now and some yellow on its own, it would be a very rich, kind of um, earthy, kind of a landscapey green. But the bit of white that I had on the brush just kind of helps to, you see? It kind of knocks it back slightly and then just blend that white in. It just keeps everything nice and um, soft and pale and pushes everything off into the distance. Okay, you see? I'm just swishing the brush now around and around in all different directions and blending it together. Um, I want to darken that side. So I'm going to take some more black, a little touch of that yellow and let's go in here with some of that. Go. and I'm only just glancing every now and again to the photograph I'm not copying the photograph exactly as it is I'm just being very very loose I'm kind of focusing more on colours I suppose really there we go right that's not bad now I'm going to add a little very light touch of black and blue just along the bottom of that because it is quite kind of dark in the bottom of the trees. So I'm just scraping a little bit of that in there. Perhaps a touch of burnt sienna. And then I'm going to soften it very gently upwards. Just here and there, you see? Because it's very kind of deep and dark. In under the base of all those trees, it's very dark, isn't it? So, scraping all this together nicely. Now, you can see it kind of coming together, can't you? So, let's have a look and see what we have. I want to make it very rich around here, so I'm going to take some black. And by the way, I haven't dampened my brush yet, since the sky. Because it's a relatively small canvas, um, it doesn't need much 
paint to go around. So let's take some burnt cyan, some lamp black and a touch of cadmium yellow. Nice thick paint now, that's what I'm doing, okay? I'm going right in under here with that nice thick, rich, greeny, brown kind of a colour. And again, soften it up. You see? I'm just swishing the brush round and round and round in circular motions to soften everything together. There we are. So, it's always thick on top of thin. That's probably the easiest way of describing it. I hope you're enjoying this. Um, by the way, if you would like to send me some of your work for my opinion, or if you'd just like to show me how you're getting on, send it to stephenconway12 at gmail.com. And you can go to my Facebook page, if you like. There's not much on my Facebook page, I'll be honest. I'm not a big, I wouldn't be a huge Facebook fan, I'll be honest. But it's Stephen Conway Art on Facebook. Um, and also my work is for sale on Etsy, if you want to go to Etsy, Stephen, Steve's Isle Paintings at Etsy. So have a look and see what you think. Give me your opinion. Okay, um, I suppose the next job I'm going to do is get some little tree trunks off in the distance. And I'm taking a small flat brush. It's fairly, fairly well worn, I'll be honest. I tend to hang on to my brushes until, ver until within they're absolutely useless. I, that's just the way I kind of work, you know. I really, really hang on to them <laughs> until I really have to throw them out. So... There we are. Let's just mix up a very pale green for this. Let me just check this now. Oh, it's a little bit darker. I go into this darker green we mixed. And just here and there, just put a hint of uh, a tree trunk just here and there off in the distance. Just an impression, just kind of a little wiggle here and there, a couple of little flicks. That's all they are. See, look, small flicks, just to suggest that they're there. And you could even put in some light ones. Let's take some Naples yellow with a touch of white. And you could put in one or two light ones through the dark areas. You see? It's all just about contrasting colours. And that'll do fine. Okay, now, moving on. We have some lovely bright foliage, don't we? Uh, I'm going to attempt that next, I think. And I lose this worn brush. Um, when painting foliage, I generally tend to use uh, splayed brushes, so kind of worn splayed brushes. So this type of a brush, you can see that? Very, very worn and splayed out. This one is not as bad. This is still fairly new. Um, but that's the kind of effect I want. So with this brush, or something similar, I'm going to, I'm not going to wet it. I'll just go up here and take some cadmium yellow, little Naples yellow, and a touch of white. And I might take a touch of blue, just to tone down that yellow just a little. There we are, just like that. And with that colour now on my brush, I'm going to just start dabbing some little highlights here and there on the trees in the distance. And notice the way I've opened my brush. I've kind of dabbed it slightly just to open the bristles out. So let's have a look. Now, let me switch on my tablet here. Actually, I must take a sup of coffee before it goes cold. I do apologise. I love my coffee. Um, every artist should have a cup of coffee next to him when he's painting. Okay, so some bright highlights off in the distance. So let's just have a look um, on the photograph. A couple of small ones just here and there off in the distance, like so. And I'm dabbing just at one corner, very, very gently. Okay, you see? Very, very gently here and there. And it's almost disappearing into the colour that's already there. That's um, 
probably the easiest way of describing what I'm doing. As if you're holding a feather now, everyone. Just gently dab, dab, dab. Just at one side of the brush and suggest some foliage on the leaves. Again, it's just a suggestion. You're not painting actual leaves. Okay, it's just a suggestion, very, very loose suggestion. And I'm going to take a bit more white into that, but a bit more blue, keep it a bit more on the cool side. And I'm going to go over here and notice I'm holding the brush at a slight kind of an angle. And that will give you the impression of the leaves, kind of the foliage falling down like this. So that's why I kind of hold my brush at a very slight angle as well. So I'll show you now on a dark part here, you see. Okay, you see what I mean? It's only very lightly, lightly dabbing, that's all. And let me take some more titanium white. And let's go up here with a slightly brighter colour. And just get some dabs in. Again, I apologise for not getting the uh, cherry blossom tree tutorial done this week. It's just that I was after forgetting about this request that I had and the person who requested it asked me a few times to do this. Um, so I said I promised them I'd do it so look I'm doing it this week. But I will be doing the cherry blossom tree in the next day or so. So it should be up on my channel fairly quickly anyway. So you won't be waiting very long. Okay everyone? Alright, let's take a bit more white. And as we go into the darker colour, I'm going to start lightening it with some white. And you notice I'm going at this angle this time. So everything then is kind of falling towards the middle of the painting. And you can see how I picked up some of the dark paint. That's quite nice, isn't it? So if you pick up some dark colour with your brush and move it around to another part, that will help also. Now let's take some more yellow and Naples yellow into that. So because we're getting to the darker colour, it's going to start standing out that little bit more. So let me take some white and a touch more yellow. And let's really go out to town here now on these trees. And I'm being careful with the shape of the trees as well. I'm trying to make them look uh, natural. So I'm not making everything very even. I'm trying to make it as random as I can. I'm getting there now, aren't we? I'm going to switch to a bigger brush because as it comes closer to us, the foliage is going to be that much thicker and more prominent. Um, a brush, a brush, a brush. Hmm. I go with a slightly bigger one. And again, you can see it's splayed out. Okay? You can splay it out like this. That's the type of brush you want for painting a tree. Uh, foliage, rather. Uh, so with this dry brush, take some cadmium yellow. Plenty of thick cadmium yellow. Let's take some titanium white. And that colour, I know now you think that colour is very bright. But it's going to mix with the colour on the canvas, you see, creating slightly duller tones. So that's why I'm going in now with a very strong bright colour. Okay, let's, uh, let's try this and see how we go. Now, nice and softly. Dab away. There we are, you see? And I'm softening that then into the dark colour. It's almost disappearing. Does that make sense? And I'll put one or two just here. And by the way, you can kind of play around with your greens on this. Um, so, for example, let's take a touch of black. And let's take a lot of lemon yellow. And that will give you a nice kind of a rich green yellow. You see? And you could add a touch of blue. And create a very bluey kind of a green. See, we can put a little bit of that in there as well. Let's take a look at that. 
and that's much uh, that's much nicer now, isn't it? Hmm. This side. Let's have a let's have a chance on this side. Let's put some rich green in here and create some distance over here on this side. This uh, this poor side has been all forgotten about, isn't it? So let's go in there along the end. Create some darks. So you can even put darks in and then put some lights in over that. So I'm just gonna dry my brush on the tissue. I'm not gonna wash it. I'm gonna take some cadmium yellow, some Naples yellow, and a touch of cadmium or touch of titanium right white. And nice bright kind of a greeny yellow. Let's put a little touch of that in. We could probably go even brighter again. Okay, white, cadmium yellow. Let's try that. Ah, you see, look, that makes an impact, doesn't it? Ah, what do you think of that? That makes a lovely impact. Let me put some of that over here. Let's wake up these trees. There we are. No. So that made a big difference now already, hasn't it? And that's pretty much our trees done. Um, I know on the photograph there's a lot of tree trunks and stalks and all that kind of thing. And look, we could even put some of them in. So let's put some in. Let's take some white. I'm going to take a touch of blue. Because looking at the photograph, there's a hint of blue in these tree trunks. Um, I suppose because they're in underneath the shadow, there's sort of light reflecting up onto the tree trunks. So there's a hint of blue in them. So let's just suggest one or two. And they can disappear then up into the, f the foliage above them. Okay. I'll take a bit more blue in that. And the blue is great for pushing everything off into the distance. And we can do one or two on this side. By the way, I know you're probably finding it difficult to see everything on the camera. Um, because, the, again, the quality is not impeccable. It could be a lot better. So I hope all of this is um, showing through on your, your computers or your phones or whatever you're using. There we are. And then with the brush, with your green colour, let's just go over those a little here and there. Just to hide them amongst the trees. You see? There we go, just like that. Simple, yeah? Done. That's our background finished. Now the fun begins. Okay, the fun, the fun, the fun. Um, greens for the course. Now I'm going to keep it nice and cool off in the distance. Again, cool colours in the distance. So a cool green. So let's take some blue. Um, there's a number of ways of making a cool green. Let me show you. Okay, we could take some cobalt blue and cadmium yellow. That makes a rich green initially, doesn't it? But then you could add a touch of white, you see. And the white takes the bite off and it Pale, kind of gives it a slightly paler tone. So that's one green, okay? That's a nice cool green there, isn't it? The other way is to take some cobalt blue and some Naples yellow, and that in itself will give you a lovely cool, cool greeny blue. Because there's a lot of white in Naples yellow, so it's a very thick, kind of a pastel creamy colour. So you can see there's almost no difference. So for now, I'm going to stick with that, either one of them, it doesn't matter. I want to keep this nice and soft, just for the distance. And I'm going to wiggle my brush side to side. And this is just a kind of a base colour now. I'm be, I'll be going over a lot of this. So I'm going to start making it slightly richer. And I'm pushing it into those trees. Because I want it to sort of almost disappear. You see?
there we go. Already, it's starting to come together, isn't it? Um, right, 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 right. I'm going to take me a nice little flat, a nice flat brush with a good edge on it. And I'm going to create some shadow just there, off in the distance. Just a little, with some black, touch of white and a touch of blue. And I'm going to create some shadow on this, um, on this grass. Let me just take some more blue in that. And with the top edge of the brush, the flat edge, I'm going to pull some of these lines just out from under the trees there, you see? That's creating a little bit of shadow. Now I'm going to clean my brush, just dip it in, rub it on the tissue, and I'm going to go into some cadmium yellow with some white, a little touch of white. And I'm going to put in some light. So there's some light coming from this side, catching this, where the sun is coming down, catching the green, catching the, the fairway. I'm going to pull that across in between those darks. All right. And that's just creating a source of light because I suppose every painting has to have a source of light, doesn't it? The light has to come from sun somewhere. So I'm going to imagine the light is coming from up here on the left hand side and it's cutting, cut, cut, cutting down through the trees. All right. Does that make sense? And let's just come along here by this bank. And I know it gets very rich and green there as well also. Um, but just along the edge of that, I'm going to put in a hint of that brown. Just to give the impression of the water's edge. Okay. Let's just pull it along very with the tip of the brush. Now you could use a pointy brush for this as well if you like. But this is fairly flat, so it's fairly kind of pointy. So I'm going to use this. And just go along here. And I'm softening it then up into the green very slightly, you see? I've just created the, the water's edge just there. Coming together, guys, isn't it? Coming together quite nice. I hope you're enjoying this. This is a nice one to try with some greens. Um, okay, I'm going to switch brushes, slightly bigger brush, just to get more coverage here. And let's make a nice green for this. So, cadmium yellow. Um, there are two ways of doing this. Hmm. We could take a touch of black. Let's try that. Yeah, that's not, uh, that's not bad. So I just dampened it slightly there because it's a little on the dry side. So a touch of black, a touch of cadmium yellow. And let's go up here and pull this down. In fact, no, I will add a touch of blue into that, I think. Just the tiniest touch. There, that's a little better. Soften that all the way down. And you can see now it is quite wet. Um, but I will put thicker colours in on top of this, you see. This is just, again, blocking in, let's say. Let's call it blocking in. So there we are. Let's... Lovely bright, a kind of a bright golf course green, isn't it? Let's put that around there. And then let's introduce a little, uh, little darker colour as it comes closer to us here. Scraping away here, you can hear me scraping it on. Blending it all together off in the distance. Again, I'm going to pull this dark down slightly into that colour. You see? And it helps complement everything. It's pulling all the colours together then, you see. Now, how's that looking? So the grassy verge. Let's just take some of that blacky colour there with some green. And let's put that in, slightly darker colour. And I'm just keeping this now nice and simple. 
This is just a nice simple tutorial for getting used to painting greens on a golf course. Let's take some maple yellow and cadmium yellow. And we have a slightly lighter colour just kind of creeping around there, don't we? Like so. And another one just here. And then we'll take some burnt sienna and with some black. And we'll put a nice dark colour just here. You see? So it's graduating from light to dark. Now let me just make sure you can see everything I'm doing there. Yeah, you can. Looks good. So at this stage now I'm just kind of glancing to and from the photograph and I'm just going to focus on this area with a little dark colour. So a slightly darker green. And I'm just going to flick it up with the tip of my flat brush and I'm flicking it off at a slight angle. You see? Because it's just slightly dark there, slightly darker. There we are. You see that now? That gives you a bit more shape to that river bank there. Small little flick. I notice how I'm softening everything together as I paint these little things. I'm softening, it, softening all the colours together very, very lightly. Now at this stage I'm going to clean my brush and there's a very bright kind of a greeny yellow just here and there. I want to try and capture that, um, that feeling of the sun kind of catching the green and ca capturing the, the fairway, let's say. So I'm going to take some cadmium yellow with this flat brush now, some cadmium yellow and a good dollop of white. So look, nice whitey yellow colour. Yes? And I'm just going to go up here under these and I'm just going to pull it down and along. There we are. And soften it down then into the colour underneath, you see? Very gently. Just pull it down very gently. And I'll do the same um, just around here. So I'm creating the shape of the um, the grass, the direction of the grass here on the painting. My brush strokes are telling me which way the grass is going to be going, if that makes sense. So again, uh, just around here, I want to separate this land bank from the back one. So I want to put a little of that through there and soften it again, soften them together. Now this is the green area here, so this is fairly, just kind of a fairly flat um, area. So I'm just going to keep this, in fact I'll just go around the edge with my brush to suggest the outside edge of the, the green. Okay, just like that. Hope that makes sense to you all. And let's go in there again create the texture of this green here. So now we almost have this little circle on its own, don't we? Very simple, isn't it? It's just very, very simple techniques. Just try to keep it simple. Now, um, I want to catch a bit of light up there. So a little bit of yellow again, a little bit of white. And don't forget, these colours will blend on the canvas. That's why you love working wet into wet. So although it looks like a bright white or yellow there, when it goes on, it's going to change. You see? Let me show you. Let's go here. So again, pulling it along. And I might even take some more white, believe it or not. Um, because the sun is kind of coming through and catching it slightly. And I might even put a little bit over here. You see? Look at that. And that's how you just create a nice lights and darks. So we're getting there, aren't we? Now, as I have that colour there, I'm just going to fill in this little land bank that we have. Just very, very quickly and very loosely. 
There we are. And I'll create some dark at the bottom of that as well. So let me just flick up. There we are. Just like that. And then let's take a bit of black with burnt sienna. That makes a nice rich brown. And go along the edge of that and flick it up very gently. Okay. There. Simple. So, you see, just try and keep everything. Just focus on the, the shapes and colours. Try not to get bogged down about little details. I know it's, it's easier said than done. Um, now, I've been painting a very long time, so it's, it's just like I'm, it just comes natural, I suppose, after a while. Uh, but I've always painted in such a way that I've kept everything very, very, very simple. Um, that's just how I love to paint. And, okay, I could go into a lot more detail if I wanted to. But, you know, I like keeping things simple. That's just the way I like to paint, so I'm just going to do it like that. You don't have to paint every single little detail. Um, absolutely perfect. Just be free and be spontaneous. And, you know, if you miss something, there's what harm. So long as you enjoy what you're doing, that's all that matters. It doesn't even have to look like what you're painting. Just a very loose representation is good enough. That's what I'll say. So, you know, don't go hard on yourself. Just, it takes time. And do you know what? I've no problem saying that there's something wrong with a painting of mine, that there's something missing, or this looks silly, or that might look silly. I don't care, it's just a painting. You know, I enjoy it, that's all that matters. Everybody has their own kind of tastes, don't they? And uh, everyone is different, and no two people are going to think exactly alike when they're looking at a painting. That's just life. So, just be nice and free and have a bit of fun with what you're doing. Right. Enough of me gibbering on here and talking rubbish. Let me get myself my coffee here. And let's get some water, wouldn't we? I'm kind of excited about this. I'm excited now to get this water in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a clean brush first. Because I want to put some nice bright blue there. So, some white. And a bit of blue there, so we'll take that. Okay, and let's just pull that down. Again, I didn't wet this brush now because I'm only painting a small area. And I'll probably get away with just scrubbing it on the canvas just for now. You see? If, if I wet this brush now, it's going to just soak the whole canvas. And I'll be trying to thicken the paint back up then again, you see. So I'm going to go up here now, and I'm just looking at shapes. So if you look at the blue on the photograph, it just kind of comes down along like this, a little wiggle. So look, let's just go down like that. Very loosely. There we are. And let's take a bit more blue. Let's just blue it up slightly here. Go right into this. And there's even a hint of green in this blue as well. You can see. It's not just pure pure blue. Um, let's go over here slightly. And don't worry if we pick up some of the green there. Look, that's absolutely fine. In fact, that will help. So that's our blue done. Next, I'm going to give this um, a wipe. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll switch to this other flat brush with the bit of green that we had. And I'm going to mix a nice little green for this so we're reflecting these colors down now they will be slightly richer because of the depth of the water and what have you so they're going to be slightly darker than what you're reflecting so let's have a look at this now let's take some naples yellow and again 
thick paint on its own, no turpentine. I'm just going to go along here, along the river's edge, and pull it down. And what I'm going to try and do at this stage now is um, try and very loosely match this shape here. So that's, that outline there, I'm just going to try and match that upside down. Okay, so you can see that, and then it comes down here, and then it comes down further again, you see? Pulling it downwards all the time. And let me take some more blue, a touch of white. It gets kind of bluey over here, doesn't it? And we need not worry about the pink. You could put that hint of pink into it if you wanted, but it's not really necessary. I would not think. So just going along there with that. And now let's start getting a little darker. Don't worry if you mess up your lines, you can fix them all again. So now, how's that looking? Some blue and a little touch of black, a little touch of yellow. I get a nice rich colour just along the top of that and maybe along here. And at this stage what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my soft brush, my powder brush, which I use to put on my foundation every day, which keeps me looking young. I'm only joking. Um, I do, I moisturise twice a day. Has to be done, doesn't it? Come on, we have to make an effort. So let's pull this down very gently, look. Down into that blue. All right, you're following. And then across very gently. Soften that. There, now look at that. Isn't that a nice simple reflection? And then it's just a case of taking a palette knife. Um, this is the one I use, but I use these ones also. Depending on what you want to do with the palette knife. I have, I have these two palette knives, I'd say, since the very beginning when I started. These are the only two that I've ever bought. And I've been painting now for a long time, since I was about nine years old. I'm almost 40. So that's a long time ago that I bought these. So I've used them all the time, but I kind of bought this then um, about, I don't know, six, seven years ago, perhaps. And I started using this one because it has a lovely straight edge and it's fantastic for a lot of different techniques. So either one, whichever you're more comfortable with. Now I want to go into, just pull some of this little yellowy, whitey yellowy color off. So I have a little roll on the end of my palette knife. Okay. And then just very gently along the edge, let's just put a few little ripples in here and there. And it's barely dragging against the canvas, you see? I'm just letting the canvas drag the paint off rather than pushing down on it. I'm just pulling it gently across and the canvas is taking the paint. So let me just take a touch of white hair now. And it gives it a nice kind of a shimmer too, doesn't it? Now, so let's take a little bit of white for this area here. So I'm not going to make it too uniform. It's not going to be the same the whole way around. Um, it's just a little suggestion of some ripples off there in the distance. There we are. And again, with your powder brush, let's very lightly go over those, pulling them completely horizontal. And that's the water finished. You see, wasn't that just so easy? 
And I know there are, okay, there are people on YouTube now, there are artists on YouTube who will spend three hours just doing a little bit here and a little bit there with tiny brushes and that's fantastic. I take my hat off to you all. You're absolutely gifted. But I like to be nice and loose and spontaneous like this. Keep it nice and simple. Simple is my motto. Simple but effective as well also. So let's take some more of this whitey yellowy colour and let's just pull some of that in there again. Create a nice edge on that. There we go. So we haven't lost it. And let's darken this again. There we go. Now it might be a bit dark, so let's lighten it slightly. Let's put some rich green in front of it. There we go. Because I don't want it to be too dark. And I'll be honest, I haven't even looked at the, the photograph on my tablet. I've just kind of, I'm focusing on this because I have the general impression done. So I'm not even looking at the photograph on the tablet anymore. I'm just going to do it my own way from, now, from here on. So let's take some white and I want to pull some light in from this side on the green and then we're going to paint the flag and somebody standing on the green. It's going to be lovely, isn't it? Okay, let's put a little flag somewhere now. I am going to have to look at the photograph for this. Um, I'm going to zoom in on my photograph and let's take some white for the pole. I used to play golf myself actually by the way. When I was a bit younger I used to love the golf. I used to love going off out on my own playing a couple of rounds of golf every week. But um, you know, things change and you have to prioritise your time. Right. Um, okay, let's say here. Okay. We'll put our flag right there. So a little line of white. And on the photograph, it's very small, you can hardly see it. Isn't that right? But I'm going to make it that bit bigger. So you can actually see the flag, yes? Now, there we go, let me just fix that a little. And let's put a flag up there. Hmm. I'll take white first. I'm going to put a little flag off like that. It's kind of falling down with the wind. And then I'm going to put a touch of blue into it. The blue will just give it a, help it pop just a little. So there could be some kind of a logo or whatever on the flag. You see? Nice and simply done. And because it's so close up, I might just give it a tiny tiny hint of a shadow just there then we have a guy standing don't we with a putter so let's get him in i'll take a touch of naples jello for this plenty of white and now let's see um okay he's kind of hunched over isn't he so that could be a little tricky a slight angle on the top of him and Clean your brush. Let's go for some dark blue with a touch of black. And we do the trousers. Alright, like so. So he's kind of twisted, isn't he? He's kind of bent over slightly. Or hunched over, shall I say. And let's put a little leg colour there. And he'll have little shoes. It's just a suggestion, I know. It's probably more funny than anything. It's not like a cartoon character, but look. It's just an impression. Don't take it too seriously. Now 
Well, that looks a bit funny, doesn't it? I'll have to bring his top down, I think, a little bit. And make his bottom slightly wider. Alright. And let's give him a bit of a shadow. So a dark green, a bit of yellow and a bit of black. And let's just pull the shadow like this. Just drag it across. And I suppose we better give the flag a little one. Yeah. And a little black on the top of his head for his cap. Now you can't see his head really because it's kind of tucked down in front. You see? And I do want to make a bit more, do a bit more work on his, on the top half of him just there. So kind of, his arm is kind of sticking out slightly, isn't it? And he has a bit of shadow on the back of him here. So how does that look there now? So look, it's not too bad, is it? And look, we could even put a hint of his golf stick, perhaps, just coming down there. Just a little, tiny, tiny hint of it. And that, my friends, is the end of that. Uh, let me have a look around now and see if there are any last minute details. Um, okay, just there. That was my that was my beloved wife letting me know that it's time to go. I've a few things to do, so I am checking out. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um I hope you've got some hints and tips from that. I really do. Let me know what you think. Again, um if you want to support me in what I'm doing, just pop over there to Patreon. And you can pledge like one one dollar, one euro per month or something, just to, just to help me out. And I'm very very thankful. And that I would think is is this. We can't forget a board. Let's put a board up here. Little board flying across. And finished. So how was that? Yeah, that was good, wasn't it? That was good fun. I enjoyed painting something like that. Nice for a change. It's lovely to work with nice, bright, rich greens every now and again, isn't it? And it's great practice. Um, yeah, I think I'll frame that and put it up for sale. Let's see if I get any offers for it. It might be nice. It turned out very well. I'm quite happy with that. Um, so have a bit of fun with it. Just keep it simple. Don't get bogged down with too much detail um, and just, you know, give it a chance. Do not force um, the painting too much. Just be very free, very loose with it. And um, just try and enjoy it just a little. Because if you're not enjoying it, it's not worth doing. So um, thank you very, very much for watching. I will see you very soon with another tutorial. Um, cherry Blossom Trees with a nice footpath going through a parkway. Yes? Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that also. So stay tuned. I hope you've got some nice hints and tips from this tutorial today. Thank you very much again for your suggestions. And um, I will see you very shortly. Happy painting everyone and God bless.